I waited to go home too. Um, I'm going to talk to you on um, out of the book of Matthew a little bit. And uh, if you were here last Tuesday, you, you notice I talked about Solomon and uh, King David. And uh, at that time, I said I was going to talk to you about vipers. And that's what I'm going to do. Because this goes along with what I was speaking of last week. So those that remember last week, that's good. And those that don't, well, that's not so good. I don't even remember last week. But uh, Matthew is a book that uh, is like a bridge to the Old Testament, or, or a bridge from the Old Testament into the New Testament. And Jesus, all throughout the New Testament, and a lot, a lot of it through the Gospels, he refers to things out of the Old Testament. And um, when you think back in Genesis, how many of you remember the Genesis story about Adam and Eve in the garden? Oh, yeah. And some, somebody came up to Eve and supposedly hoodwinked her to get her to eat from the tree of good and evil of, of knowledge. And what, um, wh who was that? Or what was that? The snake in the grass. That's right. It was a serpent. Yeah. Yes. And then, then we also remember in uh, the New Testament, over in the New Testament, when Jesus came along and, and Jesus uh, went out to the wilderness to be alone, somebody came and spoke to him. And what did he appear to Jesus as? As, as a snake. Mm-hmm. Yes, He's, he, he was. He uh, appeared to him as a snake. He, he was Satan. And then when we uh, look over, we, we, we remember snakes. about yeah, right. um, the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul, he decided he's going to take a little cruise ship. And um, I don't think it was quite the Carnival Cruise Line, but he got shipwrecked out on an island. And when they made it to the island, he gathered up some wood and built a fire. And all of a sudden, out of the wood, he, uh, got, bit. he got bit by a viper. Viper, right. And what is a viper? Yeah. A small, deadly snake. That's right. <laughs> oh, boy, you guys are really smart. And then um, we... We, I would like Jerry now to come and read a scripture from Matthew 12. Um, Jerry, 34. Would you read that one? Sure. Matthew 12. Okay. Matthew 12, verse 34. Oh, generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Thank you, Jerry. And, and he was speaking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the people who are supposed to be well-educated and know of the word. Now, isn't that something? Mm -hmm. and, and I am showing this to you to help you to realize that once we go to the altar, and we talked about that a little bit last week with Solomon and David, uh, that when we go to the altar and we pay our, um, we, we confess our sins and we uh, pay our sacrifices, that uh, Jesus forgives us of our sins. When, when we ask him for forgiveness, that is paying your sacrifices for your sins and he will forgive you of your sin. Now, however, it, does it stop there? No, it doesn't stop there. And, and we're seeing that it doesn't. Because you have to stay in the Word. See, over also over in Genesis, it says, In the beginning was the Word. And then over in Revelations, when Jesus is coming back, when God's coming back on the great white steed, it refers to Him as the living Word. The Word of God. That's his name, the Word of God. Jesus' name is the Word of God. Amen. And if we, and, and so that means that we have to do our part in knowing the Word of God. We have to uh, change and, and respond our lives to which we are learning from our Heavenly Father. 
And this is where we run into trouble. Because so many of us, we, we will read and we'll go, well, this pertains to the sinner. I already accept Christ. Uh-uh, no. It pertains to you. Because we all are sinners. It's just that we are, when we come to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, and we ask for repentance, that means we are going to practice and do those things no more. We become a new creature in Him. So therefore you have people that we call Christians in the church that think that they are higher and that they have become gods or something or they're more superior and more smarter and that they can outthink God and get around and still have their cake and eat it too. No, it don't work that way. I'm sorry to say. No, God doesn't work that way. And we, we see that throughout the scriptures. We've seen that what that completely destroyed Israel and it's completely destroying the United States and it's completely destroying the whole world that we live in right now. Because we no longer have those principles and values. Now I'm going to have Jerry come and he's going to read a scripture out of the uh, seventh chapter of Matthew, I think it's 721. Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Now, what is Jesus saying there? But he that does the will of my Father, which lives in heaven. What does that mean? Does that mean that we have to apply ourselves and do what he says in his word? Because in the beginning, he is the word. He is the word of God. He's our heavenly father. So we have to do his will. Isn't that, isn't that what he's saying? We have to change our lifestyle. But that is a scripture that so many of us, we take it lightly. We read it maybe 10,000 times or, or 100 million times throughout our lives, those that do read the Bible, and some of those that never read their Bible, they don't, they, they don't read it, they may have heard it. But there's no excuse for those that don't read the Word of God because the Word of God's been around well over 2,000 years. Even before the birth of Christ. And Jesus died over 2,000 years ago. So the word was around even prior to that. And now we are living in a time where every nation, every ear, every country, everyone has heard the word of God one way or the other. But we still choose not to do the will of our Father. We want to do the will of us, of the flesh. Now, don't you find that peculiar that in the, you go back to the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, they both knew God. They, they walked with him in the garden. But yet, that serpent, that snake, won him over. Oh, surely you won't die. Oh, surely you'll have just as much knowledge as your father, as God. Uh, no, I don't think so. But she bit it. She bit into it. She bought it, hook, line, and sinker. And then we, we find time after time throughout the Bible that things like this happen. It's because it's the viper. It's the poison that comes from the serpent. And then you've heard of the python spirit. What's a python? 
A python is a snake, isn't it? That squeezes the life out of you. Satan will come in. He'll come in to a church and, and he will squeeze the life of the Holy Spirit out of that church. He will make people kowtow to him. He'll say, gee, don't buy into that Holy Spirit stuff. That's not... <laughs> don't they look funny when they, when they get all happy like that and they want to dance to the music and rejoice? Well, David danced before the Lord and they danced in the temple they danced in the temple in the holy that's what they did and they sang songs of praise and worship they even raised their hands and surrendered to God but don't they look weird when they raise their hand oh man I don't want to be caught sitting next to that person because he raised his hands yeah. I don't want to I, look that, that person sing it out loud. <laughs> he can't even carry a tune, but he's singing it out loud. But it makes music to God's ears. God wants you to be that way. But it's the python spirit that's coming there to squeeze out that Holy Spirit so you won't do those things. And you know another thing that, that, that a snake will do? Will make you too busy. You're too busy. You don't have time because you're so worried about what this person or that person thinking and what they're doing and, and how you look from the outside to the world instead of worrying about how you look to Christ. He blinds you. And that's where we're at. We're not sold out to the word of God. Sometimes we think we are, but when push gets down to really gets down to shove, are you going to stand by your principles and your values? Well, Solomon thought he could. He even asked God for wisdom. But a snake got in there. Do you remember I talked about Solomon last week? And, and through his wife, the snake got in there and had Solomon accept the other gods from the other countries. And, and he lost it all. He lost everything. See what happens? It's that python spirit. It's that, it's that serpent. It's that brood of vipers that we have all the way through our system any longer. <laughs> a brood is a group. It's a, it's a group. It's like a herd of cattle. But these are these are vipers, these are snakes that are carrying a venom and poison to poison out the word of God and the message of the word of God and, and his word to destroy it. This nation is no longer tight to the word of God because we're doing everything we can. We have vipers in our offices. We have vipers in the church. We have vipers wherever we turn. we got to be aware of what Satan is doing. And the only way you can be aware of what the vipers are doing and what Satan is doing is by knowing the word of God yourself. That's how you know his voice. Those that know my voice. And we need to know his voice so we can follow him. See, the responsibility comes on to each one of us as individuals because we make up the government. And that's the way it was planned. That's the way he, God gave it to Moses. The law. The Judeo law. And that's what we need to understand that God provided a way out of no way. But do we have the courage to stand for righteousness? That's our choice. To either father, follow our fa Heavenly Father, to follow what He says, His living word. That's why it's a living word. Are we going to follow His living word? Are we going to know what He says? Or are we going to wait until it's too late? And then the door is shut, and we're shut out of heaven. No. We're going to learn and we're going to press on 
We're going to stand fast for Christ. Because that's what he's saying. We've got to have a new life. We become new people because we change our thoughts. We change our way of life to that that matches with the Word of God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your living Word. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for the mercy that you have given us as man. As man has fallen, but yet you have shown us mercy and kindness and love that we have salvation when we give our hearts over to you and that we renew ourselves by the Holy Spirit and by your word, the living word, every day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.